Hey guys, it's Max. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new 2019 Mac Pro and we're going to see how it performs in video editing. Now, I just have to say that this thing is an absolute beast. The build quality is amazing. I love the design. It is incredibly silent, shockingly silent. And even the case that it comes in, the box, weighs like 30 pounds for this 40 pound machine. I mean, Apple did a great job. Now it is also incredibly expensive. I'm not saying it's not worth it to a certain group of people, I think it is, but there's a lot of other options. But that we're gonna save that for a different video. Uh, so today I'm gonna focus on Final Cut Pro because I think a lot of people are going to buy this system for Final Cut. That's a Mac OS exclusive. Of course, some of you guys are going to use Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, uh, but I want to get this initial video out there as soon as I can. I know you guys are excited. You guys want to see how it does. And my full in-depth test where I'm going to look at DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, and Final Cut, and a lot of different codecs and do some comparisons, that's going to be out shortly in the future. That does take multiple days of testing and then shooting and editing. So make sure you guys are subscribed so you guys don't miss out on that video. But I'm going to have a lot of great info for you guys. Now we also did a video taking a look at the thermal performance and a ton of different benchmarks, 3D animation, graphics performance, some gaming type stuff. That's over on the Max Tech channel. I will leave a link down in the video description. Uh, there's some really very interesting things and a couple of ways that this system really stands out uh, apart from like other workstation computers. So let's jump right in and talk about the configuration here. I already did a video on what configs I recommend for most people. You guys can check that out. But I have the 12 core model at 3.3 gigahertz. Um, this has 48 gigabytes of RAM and this has their AMD Radeon Pro Vega 2 graphics card with 32 gigabytes of HBM2 memory. And that's what's gonna be very important for video editing. Now I also have the afterburner card in this system and that's gonna enable decoding of ProRes and ProRes RAS. So we're gonna put that to the test today as well. That's an option that um, I don't know how much people need to spend. If you work a lot in ProRes, maybe, but we shall see. And the one test that I want to run for you guys, the Blackmagic RAW crew, is the Blackmagic RAW speed test. Here we could see right away, we're running 8K, decoding it at 114 frames per second. That's getting close to about four streams of multicam 8K. And if we take a look at 4K, uh, we have 459 frames per second. So that's close to 20 streams of 4K multi multicam Blackmagic RAW. I also want to give you guys a reference point of performance for the system, even though I don't want to get into benchmarks. Uh, as far as CPU performance, this thing is getting about 50 to 55% more CPU performance than our iMac Pro, which has an eight core. The CPU clock speed is also running higher, which is great. And as far as graphics, in Geekbench 5's Metal Score, this thing was about 85% uh, faster, but we shall see how it performs in actual video editing. But first, let me give a huge thanks to Micro Center for making our Mac Pro content possible. Micro Center has 25 stores nationwide with an impressive variety of electronics from gaming, VR, computer parts like processors, graphics, and everything else needed to build or upgrade a PC or Mac. Micro Center has been an Apple authorized dealer since 1980. They have a dedicated Apple department with highly trained Apple sales associates. Aside from the iPhone, Micro Center carries the full lineup of Apple products and they have the largest selection of third party products and accessories for Mac and iPad. Come into a local Micro Center today and talk to one of their Apple experts to order a Mac Pro configuration that best suits your needs. Check the link in the description to find a location near you or browse all of Micro Center's Apple products online. Let's start off with the easy stuff. This is footage from the A7S II. Uh, we do have some color corrections. We have two LUTs applied to this and film grain as well. Uh, playing it back, this is at best quality. No issues whatsoever. In fact, our CPU is only running at 2% and our graphics is running, it was just 6%, went back, went to 9% right now. Now I'm exporting this five minute project. We're up to 6% CPU usage and 19% graphics card usage. So here we could see that this system is overkill if you're editing with standard 4K compressed uh, H.264 footage or H.265. And that took two minutes and 31 seconds for a five minute project. So basically 
twice as fast as real time. So that's not a big difference, but the iMac Pro also isn't limited by graphics or uh, by the CPU. It's just limited by uh, the encoder in that graphics card, the older generation. So here, both systems have a very easy time and the MacBook Pro isn't that much slower either, but it's good to see that this new AMD graphics is faster. We do see some improvement because for those of you guys that don't know, back in 2013, the last Mac Pro, it was actually quite a bit slower than the MacBook Pro and an iMac when you're exporting this type of simple video. But now it's good to see with these new graphics cards, you're no longer slower at exporting, even if you can edit faster. Now let's do a similar test with H.265 HEVC. This will use the T2 chip that's inside the system. And just as I expected, the time is basically the same as the iMac Pro because they're both using the same exact T2 chip and the rest of the components have no issues with this footage. Now let's jump into 10-bit HDR. Playing this back, there are no issues whatsoever. Everything's perfectly smooth. Uh, I have a couple LUTs here. We're still at 4% CPU, 8% GPU, now back to 2% CPU. No issues at all whatsoever. But the issue that people are having is when you're actually trying to export this because with the previous machines, there's no acceleration for the exporting. It has to be CPU only and took forever. The new graphics card in the new MacBook Pros, the 16 inch ones and this system have a 10 bit encoder. I don't know if Final Cut is using it yet. It might still be software. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so that took 35 minutes, which is a long time for a five minute project. Uh, that is not an issue with the system at all. It's an issue with Final Cut. Um, the iMac Pro actually takes 45 minutes, so we do see some improvement there, but this system, it wasn't even using half of the CPU. Ultimately, what we really need is for Apple to release a version 15 of Final Cut for HDR, HEVC, 10-bit exporting with a graphics card because a project like this should take somewhere between two to three minutes to export. Now let's get into the harder, tougher stuff. Here I have 4K 60 frames per second footage from the Canon C200. This is raw footage. Some corrections applied. I have a LUT applied here as I expected and as it should for this amount of money. It is playing back perfectly smoothly. Uh, the graphics card is running at 67%. The CPU is running at 27%. Uh, so no issues whatsoever. Playing this back on uh, other systems, say like the iMac Pro, would basically max out the graphics card. If you add more corrections and effects and titles than this, you will get some choppiness, some stuttering, uh, and it's basically maxed out at 60 FPS, where here you should be able to do multi-cam 24, 30 FPS, C200 RAW, say three streams of it. Very interesting. So we're exporting this, and I'm used to seeing the CPU and the graphics card be maxed out with this footage, and here, our graphics card is running at 67% as well, and our CPU is running at 28%, and this is a 12 core configuration. This is weird. I've never seen this not be maxed out. So for the first time ever, 4K60 C200 RAW is not the limitation. The limitation is the encoder. That took five minutes for a five minute project. Uh, in comparison, the iMac Pro takes closer to eight minutes. So that is a pretty significant improvement, but not just that alone, the CPU and graphics aren't maxed out. The, where the iMac Pro is maxing out and it's limited at speed, this has way more overhead if you wanna do multi-cam, if you wanna do more effects, more animations, harder stuff, and it'll still do five minutes because right now the limiter is the encoder. We're just sticking at one-to-one. -one. That is good news for those of you guys who work with this footage. If you're exporting a 20-minute doc, you know, you might be able to export it in 10 to 15 minutes if it's 24 or 30 frames per second. Not bad at all. Uh, so we'll take a look at that a little bit more in my full detailed video. And now let's take a look at Red Raw. This is 4.5K, playing it back perfectly smoothly. Uh, the CPU is at 76% right now. 58 just dropped down. The GPU kicked up to help out now. So it balanced it out. 25% on the graphics no issues whatsoever. Now I do wanna say once again that Apple is gonna release um, the Red's new Metal API, so it's gonna use less of the CPU, more of the graphics, but even without that, this is playing back just fine. Let's go ahead and export this. Okay, we have three minutes and 40 seconds for a five minute project, 4.5K raw exporting higher than 4K. So almost twice as fast as the iMac Pro. 
Um, not bad, not bad at all. And it will be even faster because of the crazy graphics card in the system. I guess we should test out some ProRes RAW. So let me get my ProRes RAW hard drive and we'll plug it in. Here we have 4K 120 frames per second ProRes RAW from the FS5 Mark II recorded to an Atomos Inferno. This is slowed down here. Uh, you guys see the slow motion. This is with the color grading, uh, with corrections applied. I have a LUD applied and my CPU is at 2%. That means it's not doing anything at all other than running Mac OS because it doesn't go below that I think at all. That's because the afterburner card in the system is doing all of this processing. Now our graphics card is only at 8% and that is because it, all it has to do is take the color correction and the LUT that's applied and uh, just add it to the footage once that's done. No issues whatsoever here. Uh, let's go ahead and go. <laughs> Look how smooth that is. I mean, ProRes RAW is already pretty easy uh, on a system with Final Cut, but I don't know if I've seen it this good. Let's go ahead and export five minutes of this ProRes RAW footage out to ProRes 422. So we're halfway through the render here and our CPU has been only running at about 55% and our graphics, are they're only running at about 20, 25%. Stop a minute and 45 seconds for five minutes of ProRes RAW, color corrected, LUT applied, not too bad, not bad at all. Uh, now let's go ahead and take out our afterburner card and see how much the afterburner card was helping this system. Okay, so that literally took me about a minute and 30 seconds, no longer, I don't think I've ever removed something from a computer with no tools whatsoever that fast. <laughs> Here's the afterburner card. This is worth $2,000. Uh, let's set it down carefully right over here. Start playing this back, same exact project. And now uh, the CPU has about 21% usage. Now the graphics card is still about the same. Basically it took off 20% of CPU usage running this and everything was processed here instead. Uh, now it went up slightly. Let's try to go back and forth. Super smooth still, I mean, it has no issues. And this is why I was saying uh, in my configuration guide that hold off from buying the afterburner card. We wanna make sure we test it out because the CPU is already so powerful in the system and ProRes RAW is so efficient with Final Cut that you might not need it. You might have enough horsepower even with a 12 core, possibly even an eight core, which I would suggest at least the 12. Okay, so the render is about halfway done here and we're already almost at a minute and 45 seconds. So clearly the afterburner card is helping. It took a two minutes and 52 seconds. That is very fascinating. Um, interesting. So I guess I'll have to do a lot more testing on the Afterburner card, different playback. I'm gonna have to find some 8K ProRes RAW footage. If you guys have some, please let me know in the comment section. That way I could test it out with that and to give you guys a better verdict on if it's worth it or if it's not. Uh, so that is it guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. One thing I have to point out is that this thing was completely silent the whole time. I literally cannot hear it unless my ear is like an inch away. And even then it's so subtle and quiet, it is shocking. So, uh, and we actually, we pushed it in our other video on Max. If we push it to the limits, we max out the CPU and the GPU at the same time for an extended period. Uh, I'll just let you go watch that video. And the link is down below. So thanks again to Micro Center for making this content possible. Make sure you guys click above right over there to see more videos on the Mac Pro, including testing different graphics cards that you can add in yourself to see if it's worth paying for the pricey uh, workstation graphics card, the Radeon Vega 2 that's inside of here. Thanks for watching. This is Max, and I will see you in the next video.